okay so now we can generalize this and extend it further so we can write something like this the probability of the event one given a new data point divided by probability of getting e2 divided by uh, sorry probability of e2 given a new data point what effect does it bring to this ratio right all right now this can be written as probability of that we saw from our conditional probability is probability of e1 intersection d divided by probability of d the whole thing divided by probability of e2 intersection d this is exactly the conditional probability we saw in our previous video because right now we are considering this sample space okay we are not looking into the entire sample space where e1 and e2 lies rather we are looking into the sample space where d has already occurred and which is the conditional probability statement so now this reduces to now you can cancel these two terms here and this becomes p of e1 intersection d divided by e2 intersection d now we can also rearrange these terms again and write something like this p of e1 intersection d divided by p intersection e1 okay and this whole thing divided by p e2 this is just rearrangement of terms nothing fancy and probability of e2 and now that we have divided by some new terms in order to cancel them i have to also multiply by p of um, e1 so that this e1 and this e1 cancels out and divided by p of e2 so if you notice here this factor is what comes up when we have a new information and this is the original ratio and this is called as the prior a fancy term again you must have encountered this this is called as prior because this is what we had this ratio is what we had earlier before we got this d as the new information and this portion here is called posterior that means what effect did it bring to this ratio here p probability of e1 divided by probability of e2 what influence did it bring to this quotient when we got some new information d and that is all about Bayes rule we want to find this factor that how is it going to influence the original ratio so this is prior and this is called posterior so let's look into one more example so that this concept becomes clear so i have uh, neatly written the formula again and if you uh, observe again this portion and this is nothing but the conditional probability given e1 as the sample space in this case so we can write this as probability of d given e1 right and divided by probability of d given e2 this is just uh, the situation flipped right <coughs> okay excuse me and this is remains same probability of e1 given by e2 this is again the conditional probability terms this is the priory and this is the posterior okay so uh, uh, let's solve this problem uh, a typical clinical problem uh, it says that 10 percent of the patients entering a clinic has liver disease and 5% of the clinic's patient are alcoholics okay 
and it has also been studied that patient who has uh, liver disease or uh, you know out of them 7 percent of them were alcoholics ok. So, now uh, what we need to find is the what is the probability that an alcoholic person has liver disease. So, if we derive the values uh, you know in terms of probability we can say that probability of a patient who has liver disease is equal to 10 percent which is about 0 0.1 ok that we got from this question, this statement here. The second thing we know is the probability of a patient is alcoholic is also given by patient who is alcoholic is about 5 percent. So, about 0 0.5 ok. Uh, it has also been studied that patient who has liver disease uh, the 7 percent of them were alcoholic. So, we know this term as well it says given the person has a liver disease then what percentage of them are alcoholic is also given as 7 percent which is 0 0.07 and what we are supposed to find we are supposed to find given a person is alcoholic what is the chance that that person has a liver disease ok. So, in this case we can say that event 1 could be a person has a liver disease event 2 is that person is an alcoholic ok. So, we want to find out this shaded reason here all right ok. So, what I can uh, derive from a conditional probability is probability of a person having liver disease given that person is alcoholic I can write this as P of L intersection A divided by the P of probability of A. Similarly, I can say that given a person uh, a person is having a liver disease and that person is alcoholic this is given I can write it similarly as P of A intersection L divided by P of L. Now, if I use these two equations ok. So, now from these two terms here what I can derive because if you see here the numerator in both the cases are same. So, basically I can equate them. So, what I can say is P of L given A times probability of A is equal to probability of A given L times probability of the liver disease and if I can rearrange the term what I need to find is given the probability that an alcoholic person. So, that means, I have to find that this term is given, this term is given to us, this is also given to us, I have to find this. So, P of having a liver disease given the person is alcoholic can be calculated as P of L divided by P of A times P of A given L and this is a simple calculation now. Uh, P of L having a liver disease is nothing but 10 percent which is 0 1 times P of uh, percentage of people having uh, uh, you know are alcoholic given they have liver disease is 7 percent. So, which is 0 7 sorry this is 0 0.1 because it is 10 percent divided by probability of the person is alcoholic is given as 5 percent. So, basically you have this calculation and whatever number it turns out this is going to be your probability of a person given that he is or she is alcoholic and has a liver disease. So, I this is how we, we can apply Bayes rule uh, to find such kind of information. So, I hope you have learned something new today and kindly practice this Bayes rule because there are a lot of machine learning problems uh, which 
where we can apply Bayes rule to come to a conclusion. So till then have a great day.